Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Now we're going to have a simple short video today and um, we are going to be rehousing a Seriopagabus lividus or the lividum. Now these have a um, bad reputation for being rather defensive, borderline aggressive that's not a word we use very often in the spider room here because we don't see our spiders as being particularly aggressive, more defensive. That being said, this particular young lady, I think she's had a troubled childhood and um, she is absolutely full on. She's very, very lively. Now, we picked her up. As you can see, she's bouncing around this box. We picked her up at the last show and um, we've had her in this box and she is absolutely nuts. Now, generally speaking, we don't, even our lively spiders, we can get them to a point where they are relatively calm and simple to deal with. So I thought we'd do this one today just as a little test to see how things go because this one is most definitely got the ability to go either way so hopefully if she does decide to play up we can hopefully sort her out and move her in still in a calm fashion if she is hell-bent on giving us grief then we have still got to get her in the box so we will see how we deal with that as we go and it's one of them things we're just going to have to play and move as the spider moves and we're going to have to see how we do it so we are going to put her in one of these we did have two choices we could have gone with one of these or we could have gone with one of the bra plus five liter tubs now i recently lost um, one of my females in one of them five liter tubs and i didn't think too much of it i just thought it's one of them things we've we've lost a spider it happens to all of us and um I didn't really understand why she died, but like I say, it happens. So everything else was fine, so I couldn't pinpoint a reason. And then I was speaking to um, our good friends over at Portsmouth Tarantulas, and uh, Danielle was telling me she had lost um, one also in a five-litre bra blast, and she's had issues in the past with other spiders in those five-litre bra blasts. So... We're wondering now whether maybe there is a connection with that with the tub. Maybe for whatever reason, we're not 100% sure. And I can't really see the difference between this type of thing and the 5, five litre. Although with our trials with these, we've not had any issues yet. And many of our arboreal spiders, which we will cover in another video, we're going to move some of our verses over and um, maybe a couple of pokies as well. So we will do a video on them, which may well follow this one because it would be an interesting thing to see how we get them spiders into these containers and how they do. All the ones that we've used so far have worked really, really well and our spiders seem to be doing very well in them. So we're not 100% sure, but this is where we have to be. You know, we've got to play around with these things and see what, what gives. So we've already got our holes drilled in the top here. This is a fossorial spider, so it's a spider that likes to dig down, disappear. And uh, this might be the reason that we're getting so much attitude from this spider is because she cannot, at the moment, escape down, down into a burrow. And that may well be a little bit of the reasons why she's a little upset. Now, we've had the, the cobalt blue, as they're commonly known. As you know, they're an old world spider. And we've had them in um, in enclosures before where they've actually spent much of their time sitting up above ground. But it's normally in the mouth of the burrow. It's not very often that they actually stay fully exposed. So obviously being a fossorial spider, they do get a lot of security and comfort out of the fact that they can retreat down below ground. So we're going to top this up like this. 
Now when we've got an ex exceptionally lively spider like this one, this hasn't got a great deal of room to play around. So we're going to put this in here. We've got a little bit of box to make a, a starter tunnel, which I really, really do hope she disappears down into and not straight over the top. We're going to go in there. We're going to have this a little deeper than the others, a little shallower, sorry. Just so that we've got this little bit of room, I'm hoping that she'll go in and either disappear down into there or she might just come straight over the top. We're going to find out very soon. All right, we'll put a little bit of this in here. And we're going to There's not many spiders that, um, well, there's not many, there's not many of them. I tend to, I tend to treat them all pretty much the same and think generally speaking, none of them are too bad, but this one, this one has proved every time I've opened the lid on this thing, it has gone absolutely crackers so this is going to be an interesting thing so what we're going to do we're going to try and move her over into here you notice we've cleared the desk we've taken pretty much everything out of the way that's going to be in the way we're going to get rid of some of this stuff and this is purely so if if it goes um and does a runner Hopefully, we can maintain it in this desk fairly easy. Now, I'll tell you what we'll do is if we can grab our light there, please, my dear. We can, um, just in case we want a bit more light. Because one of the things with this guy, this is, um, they're commonly known as the cobalt blue. And this girl here is, in fact, really, really blue. She's very, very pretty. She is not stopping bouncing about. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to lift this lid up and we're hopefully going to get some really nice close-up looks of this spider. Hopefully without it having an absolute hissy fit. There we go. Look at the blue in them legs. She is absolutely beautiful. Now this is an adult female. Should we try a little bit of light? See what? Yeah, you're getting a bit of blue there. Oh yeah. Wow. Now we're getting a bit of blue, yeah? That has almost got the blue that we see on the electric blues. It's such a beautiful, beautiful blue coming out in them legs. And you'll notice it's even on the back of the legs as well, the back legs. Really, really pretty. Now, as she is at the moment, she is literally sitting there, ready to explode. Now, this is a spider that you seriously do not want your fingers near. Because, you know, she responds to absolutely everything. Now, it would be nice if she would open up a little bit, but I fear... If we touch her, she is going to explode into a different kind of um, attitude. So we don't want to upset her any more than necessary. But we do want to have a look at her as well. Do we try it? Do you have your guts? Hmm? Use your guts, what you always do. Yep, I think my gut's telling me just to get her in the box. So let's go for it. Yeah. Let's see if we can get her in. Oh, here she goes. Now, one of the problems we got here is I'm going to have to turn the light out. We've had a really good look at her. The blue in that leg, look at that. Isn't she an absolutely wonderful looking spider? Now, we got this spider from Lewis and Ellie at the last show. 
And we do have a male here, so we're hoping that um, maybe we can uh, pair these guys up. Now then, we're gonna we're gonna have to be very very careful with this, and unfortunately. I'm more concerned about her doing a runner. She is so jumpy. I don't want to come in back up the box. In this instance, when we've got a spider like this, if she was to come up the box, um, do I need to come around here a bit? You come over here. We're going to go this way. If this spider was to run up the box towards my hand, then you would literally just drop the box. She will be fine, you just drop the box. If she starts to run up the paintbrush, you just drop the paintbrush, yeah? Your personal safety is what counts in this situation. So we always have to be very, very careful. These guys, when they want to be, can be extremely fast as well as being very defensive. So your safety is paramount. If we have to drop the box or the paintbrush and she ends up loose on the desk, it's not a problem. We can recatch her, deal with her again. Um, we do have an option where we could catch cup her in this box and then try and transfer her into this one. But I don't really see the benefit of that because we're in the same position, we're just gonna to have to do it twice. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna try and do it like we do most of them. And that is to pick this up and walk her into that box. As you can see, she is, see how she literally just bounces around. We've got to be very, very careful now. So we're going to take her up here. Do you need a step? What we're going to do, we're going to get this edge on here. Bearing in mind, a spider will often run up something rather than run down. So this is going to be a little awkward. So we're just going to come in. As soon as we touch this spider, she's going to react. Very gently. You, just... oh. you see how she goes? Oh, she's come back up to us, that's good. You see how fast she is? And you can see now how they literally run upwards. We can get some of that. Look at that. Very, very blue. Isn't she beautiful? Almost like that sort of a grey with a black sheen to the abdomen. There she is. That is hilarious. You see how frantic she is? That is hilarious. She's going to house herself. She's actually going to house herself by the look of things. We just give her a little time to settle down. Let's move this out of the way. There we go. What a wonderful looking spider. Now, as you can see there, this is a spider that's, that moves incredibly fast. And it's so important that we we are so, so careful when dealing with this kind of thing. We don't want to take any chances. And if there is the slightest chance that this girl is going to end up on your hand or on your arm, we need to try and avoid that. And you can tell with her erratic behavior, the way she reacts, that there is a very, very high possibility with this spider that if she makes contact with your warm flesh, the first thing she will do is bite. 
She will bite and ask questions later. So it's very, very important that we understand her demeanor, the way she's behaving. Now you've seen before with our funnel webs, when we've managed to get them out and you can tell, although they're highly defensive, that is what they are. They are defensive, but they're still stable in the way that they're behaving. They're still behaving like they are in control. This spider is behaving out of control. You see that by the way she runs, the way she's done circuits around this tub. She doesn't really understand or know where she's going. And this is what makes her awkward, makes her difficult to deal with, which then in turn makes it a little bit more um, dangerous, if you like, for us. Because we really, really have to be careful with what we do and how we do it. She nearly helped herself. She very nearly did. So what we've got now is we've still not got her in the box. I'm going to get a quick snap there because such a lovely, lovely looking spider. So what we've got to do now, once she finds the hole inside there, she will be fine. The question is, can we get her to actually look at that without doing a circuit of the box again? So we're just going to touch her back foot at the moment and see if we can't tempt her over. And a bit of luck, she won't actually run out and down the tub. She might just feel a little bit of vibration and react to that. All right, we'll get our catch cut. There you go. You see her? She noticed that. Now, that would have been not so much sight, that would have been air movement. She will feel that brush of air, and that's what she's reacted to there. So, now we're going to touch this back leg, and we are just very, very gently. Can you see that? We are very, very gently just going to touch it very gently. Just making contact now. Notice the front legs are starting to retract. What we want to do is keep her on this very, very slow movement. Just whoa, 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 whoa. You're going to make this the hard way, aren't you? Okay. Okay. What we're going to do, as long as she's sitting still. You little bugger. All right, okay. There we go. She's obviously not going to do that. <laughs> that was actually going to be a really cool photograph, and I missed it. <laughs> and again, because like when we're doing these spiders, if we see little opportunities where we can get a really nice photograph, it's often worth trying to do that doesn't always work as you've just seen so now as you can see we've got a catch cut that's almost the size of the box so what we've done is we're gonna we put it in that way and as you remember me saying about spiders often prefer to go up rather than down this is a prime example so we want to turn her around. Yeah, she's in. She's in. There we go. And you can see her there. Absolutely lovely. You can see that beautiful abdomen now. The markings on the abdomen. She is a very, very pretty spider. That blue is phenomenal. Absolutely wonderful. Look at that. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Right. So now we've got her in there. We're going to Try and get that photograph again. It's 
It's not quite as good as the one we would have got when she was facing us on the table, but it's good enough. So what we're going to do now, we're going to put the lid on her. You notice there's no water bowl. We're going to put the water bowl in later on. Once she's found that burrow and she's in it, we'll then put the water bowl because she will now dig around and move this about. So we're going to give her the time to do that and find her own security within there. Now, one of the reasons that we went ahead and done this video is because I could tell from the way she's reacted in the box how cranky she was actually going to be. And uh, it's, it's important to actually look and understand when you're looking at your spider why it's going to react the way it's going to react. And we saw there that she, her whole reaction is completely erratic. So she's not a spider with intention, if you like. She literally just tears off, runs around. She's all over the place. And that's what makes them awkward. If we've got a spider that physically will stand its ground, we know that the most it's going to do is slap its feet and come forward. We can deal with that. When we've got a spider that wants to be defensive but also tear around and be a lunatic at the same time, it's, it's a much more difficult thing to, to deal with. And the chances are, in this kind of situation, if she was to run up the brush and run up our arm or onto our hand or anything like that, there is a high possibility that she would actually bite as she went. And this is where most people come unstuck. This is where most of the bites occur, is when things are being rehoused or they're surprised. You know, they take um, the wrong signals, and they think there's food, and they come out and they grab without realizing it's actually you. When they're like this, they're already afraid. They're on the move. And it's you're in a much higher opportunity to get bitten in this situation. So it's very important that when we move them, we do it in such a way that we can just let go of everything if needs be. You saw when she charged up the box, she literally ran and jumped out of the box. I just dropped the box. It's really, really important that you just do that so you're free from it. And then that way, she went down straight off onto the carpet. We've got a real thick pile carpet in here, so it's um, very soft landing. And they actually go down quite well. When they leap like that, they're spread eagled and they hit the floor and they don't hit it as hard as you might think. But it's not like a full big, if that had been a big therophosa or something, it might have been a little bit different because of the weight of the abdomen. But these size spiders, they land and fly pretty well. They're good. Now, you will see there, she hit the floor, comes straight back up the table leg, across the table, and she almost rehoused herself. Now, I'm sure that wasn't her plan because that's the one thing she was trying to get away from in the first place. So she almost rehoused herself. So we can now sit back, give her a chance to settle down, and we can work out our plan of attack. We had our catch cup ready. She went on the table, and we took the opportunity to try and get a photograph, which was a bit cheeky because she wasn't going to sit still, was she? And she's straight back off the table, and we ended up, we had to catch cup her. So we took the opportunity, and the reason we catch cupped her down here is because there's lots of stuff down here. We don't want to lose her in amongst all the rubbish. So it's better to just catch cup her start again and then you see when we get her over to here we change our complete plan altogether and we put our in a box and we took her upside down the reason being is that this catch cup pretty much fills the top of this so it cuts down our escape route so then we can put that in and we can gently feed her out but you'll notice they always want to come up and this is one of the things if you're handling your spiders and you're, you're doing your rehouses nine times out of ten even a fossorial spider will want to go up rather than down. So it's just a, a thing of nature. They all want to go up. So cut that escape route out and you're halfway there, you know, and then just take your time. As soon as she hit the floor, she hasn't moved since she landed there. She's still sitting in the same spot now. And um, she'll soon settle down and she'll be all right. And I'm sure that once she's had a week in here and she's had a bit of peace and quiet, she'll get back to being a little bit more settled in herself and she'll be all right. I hope so anyway, because we've got a male to introduce to her. And um, yeah, he's going to need to be a brave little soul, I've got to admit. But um, yeah, 
he's going to have his hands full with her. But yeah, so we've done this video just really showing that it doesn't always go to plan. And I was pretty sure this was going to give us a run around. And she has done, you know, she's not let us down. She's given us the run around right, right well and truly. So hopefully you would have seen how to deal with something that's a little bit more erratic. But it's all about reading that spider and seeing how it behaves. But you can see how quick they react very, very fast. You just need to be one step in front. And hopefully all will go well for you as well. Right then, that is our Liverdon. Now she will stay in there. We will keep her um, at a temperature of um, between 70 and 80. It's quite a broad range with these guys. They don't need an exact temperature. We've said many times in the past, don't chase the numbers. Just look at your environment. Don't chase the numbers. Now, between 70 and 80, anywhere between there, you'll be fine. Um, Humidity-wise, these guys like it quite high. So we're looking at, again, between 70 and 80% humidity. They do like a nice, moist soil in which to live. Now, we can do that in here. We know we've got moist soil, so we can see the color of it through the box. If we can maintain that color, we know we've still got moist substrate. And that is all we need to do. You don't have to worry about trying to get them numbers correct in your humidity because it's harder in soil. So we work it on color rather than numbers. So if you think 70 to 80, you're, you're looking at quite a high humidity. So you're looking at a nice, rich, dark color, but you don't want it wet. And when we want to add water to this, once we know where our burrow goes, she will probably go down here and straight down the back. We can add moisture to this end and we can pour it down the side here and it will filter through. And then if she wants to be wetter, she will take her burrow towards the wet soil. But if you just tip it in here, she's got the choice. She can stay a little bit drier or she can be a little bit moister. Choice is hers. And that's how we're gonna work it out. And then food wise, with one of these guys, you're looking at a female here. She will take on an adult roach, dubia roach, probably one roach a week more than enough. When we start to condition for breeding, we'll give her a little bit extra. So we'll be hoping to breed this spider in the next week to 10 days. Um, so she will now be left for probably two days to settle in. If within that two days she has disappeared and made a burrow, we will then feed. If she hasn't, we'll leave her for a little bit longer and allow her to settle in and make her home. Then we will feed. We won't feed until she decides to hide herself away a little bit, which might sound a little bit backward because quite often if you're new to the hobby, you're always told if your spider hides away, it's probably getting ready for pre-molt, getting ready to molt out. Now, with a fossorial spider, that is how it lives. It wants to go down and hide down into a burrow disappear that's its world that's its home so we are looking if she's still sitting outside here she isn't fully settled in yet so we don't the last thing we want to do is upset her by putting a roach in there that is constantly going to be running around bumping into her and upsetting her so we leave her until she disappears of her own accord when she does that we give her a day or two to settle in then we drop a roach in and the chances are you'll hear her grab that roach so that's the time to, to feed her. And then we can go in forward. We can feed her a good sized roach every week. Once a week, be more than fine. That's more than enough. And like I say, when we're building up towards um, breeding, we will offer them maybe, maybe a roach every other day for like a week. And we'll just build up that little bit, especially with some of these that are hard on their males. Now, if we can take that edge of... Um, feeding response out of them there is an opportunity that our male just might get on a little bit better doesn't always work but it's always worth a try and it's also good to get our female in a good tip-top condition ready to produce eggs that's the key we want her to be in tip-top condition so this spider's already started off in good condition she came in lovely condition as you've just seen um, so we just want to take the edge off of her now and hopefully get her settled in and a bit of luck we'll have a nice breeding video um, or it'll be a nice eating video, one or the other, all depending on how the poor little male gets on. Right, well, I hope you enjoyed that and you found it informative and uh, you got to see that it's not always as easy as it looks.
sometimes we have a spider that does give us a little bit of grief. Right, don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. And I will see you soon, guys.